Hi everyone and welcome to the streets of Adelaide for the Dunlop Series for 2014. We've changed the game a little bit since we saw you last December because we've changed the formats for this year. There'll be two races at every round and they're longer races too. So that first corner carnage should disappear that we had last year with lots of safety cars. There'll be separate qualifying sessions at four of the seven rounds, including this weekend on the streets of Adelaide. 30 cars, lots of drivers stepping up and this guy is back. Paul Umbro won the series in 2002. 12 years on, he's back to stay race sharp for the endurance races, where he'll team with Jamie Winkup at Red Bull Racing Australia. It's all about making sure that he's race fit come September. Paul Umbrell may be a former winner of the development series, but he knows he'll have to up the ante to take on this current generation of pacey drivers as he strives to prepare for the endurance races later in the year. It's been a full circle for me. This is where I started and coming back here, but I guess, you know, the main, the main prize for us is to make sure I'm a ready and raring to go for the endurance races this year with Jamie. His teammate this year is Gary Jacobson, a Formula Ford graduate who will no doubt soak up all he can from his new mentor in his second year in the championship. Paul's quite up to speed with the Van Supercar. Uh, his experience is something that I'm trying to uh, keep up with now during race weekends. If I can feed off that as much as I can, I think I'm going to have a really good year. Last year's Dunlop Series runner-up Ash Walsh set his sights on the title last year only to see it slip away to Dale Wood. But this year, he's especially hungry to go one better. Really crucial for me this year to prove to the guys up and down the main game pit lane that I'm uh, capable of doing the job. So I felt Sydney was probably my best round in doing that. I felt really good and comfortable there. So I feel like Adelaide coming off the back of there has been quite good. So I'm going to try and build on that experience and do the best job that I can. There's an international flavour to the Dunlop series this year with Swede Frederick Lestrup joining the fold. He's been a long-time observer of the category and can't wait to adjust to driving a V8 supercar. I've been a fan for many, many years. I've watched it on, on TV, downloaded all the races and seen everything. I know I know more than about the people, the tracks, the drivers, the teams than, than people might think. And it's been a dream for many, many years to come here. And now I'm here and just to be here for me is a, it's a big thing. It's, it's an emotional roller coaster. 2012 Formula 4 champion Jack LeBrock will grid up for the first time in Adelaide as part of Erebus Motorsports Academy program. Other strong challenges for the title this year could come from youngsters Cameron Waters, who will race under the Ford Performance Racing banner, and Andre Heimgartner, who joins the reigning champion team MW Motorsport. Coming out of Formula 4, I was, I was pretty fast in that and I was, I was winning a lot. Um, getting in the DVS series, I just had to learn so much. Um, I just thrown in the deep end. So, um, yeah, I learned a lot in my first year of DVS, but I think I can kind of take that into this year and um, learn from all my mistakes in the past. The best thing I learned last year was sort of how to conserve these tyres. These tyres are a lot different to drive than anything else I've driven. So, um, especially I learned that here last year, first race, massive flat spot on the first lap and had to, had to sort of survive the rest of the race. But keeping the young drivers honest will be experienced campaigners, including Andrew Jones from Brad Jones Racing, who finished third last year, and Paul Morris, who has added incentive to put in a solid year after signing with Ford Performance Racing for the V8 Supercars Endurance events with Chas Mostert. It's a brand new season for the Dunlop Series 2014, and there's so much on the line. The first round kicks off here in Adelaide after the break. Cars on track for the warm-up lap for this first race in the opening round of the 2014 Dunlop Series and Cam Waters in the NZ. Ford Performance Racing run Falcon has taken his very first pole position in the Dunlop Series. Fantastic job from the young gun from Mildura, now living in Melbourne and part of the FPR factory squad. This is the ex-Chaz Mostert car, and he's taken his first career pole. A nice little check too, $500, with thanks to Armour all for the young gun. The 19-year-old will start from pole for this first race of 14 races across seven rounds for 2014. Greg Murphy's alongside me. Let's check out the grid. Ash Walsh, runner-up in the series last year. He starts on the front row. Yeah, he's starting where he left off, left off last year, but a great performance by Cam Waters. He is a star of the future, no question about it. FPR have recognised that. Back a little bit down the, the row, row six, Gary Jacobson and Aaron Russell. Jack LeBrock, Morgan Haber. There's some great names in here. This, this field is really shaping up to be something this season. I'm really looking forward to it. 
Frederick Lestrup, the Swede, who's joined this weekend. So Robert Dahlgren in the Volvo in the Championship Series. Very international. Series. He's not the only one who's come to play in V8 supercars. There are five drivers making their Dunlop debut. Dan Day is one of them down the back in the ex-Nick Perkat car. Green flag in the back. We're good to go. 27 laps. Longer races this year. More opportunity for drama. Waters and Walsh, front row. We're going in 2014 on the streets of Adelaide. And it's Ash Walsh, the infant's friend Ford. Was he moving though, Aaron? One. Was he creeping slightly? Maybe. I just thought I saw a move. We'll find out if we get a replay. But Cam Waters away. Pretty clean. They all streaming through. Turn one, two here at the awesome Calypso 500 Adelaide Street Circuit. I'm gutting it to third. Umbrell trying to round him up and oh, get him back, wide. he's gone deep. Cold tyres. Yep. Chris Pither tries to grab him in that ice break coffee Commodore. Taz Douglas does get around. Oh, he got but he gets a tap on the way through. Manages to hang on. It is busy stuff. Yeah, Pither's there and there's Morris as well. Paul Morris and the Sergeant Security Falcon. He just can't get enough oh, of this. Oh, Jeff Emery lunging. Look at that for a move on Andrew Jones. It's all happening on the on the first lap here, but Walsh, he has got a clean getaway. Our pulse had a bit of smoke coming from the damage there of, I think, was that Peterson's car? Young Ant Peterson from New Zealand. He is in here. He's got uh, tyre rubbing. Left rear guard is folded in. Last yep. year's, last season's runner-up to you in the New Zealand Super Tours as they sort themselves out on this opening lap. Longer races this year, so there's more opportunity to find some racetrack, find some rhythm. Ash Walsh leads the way. He won the corresponding race here last year. Cam Waters next, then Heimgartner, Taz Douglas, Chris Pither, Paul Umbrell, Paul Morris, Ed Pedersen, one of three cars from the Eagleston Motorsport team. But that's not going to clear itself anytime soon, I don't think. Yeah, I think it's looking all right. It, 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 it will depend on how much rubber it does rub off that uh, Dunlop tyre there. But, you know, the, the bodywork looks OK. It doesn't look like it's going to be too much of an issue as far as, you know, having to, to get the meatball flag and, and incorporate into this one. One of the big issues at this time of the day, with lots of the cars. Andrew Jones, a good example. More uh, stickers across the top of the windscreen. Yeah, they need to take visor. down the windscreen. Yeah. The sun coming into turn four is terrible this time of the day. It's going to be interesting tomorrow with the supercar race as well. They're going to have a lot of this. But uh, Pearson running pretty wide. Jeff Emery up the inside. Good move there. Will he have the run down into the infamous turn eight? No, looks like looks like Ant. Well, there's going to be an overlap. This is going to be interesting. Someone has to no, yield. No, he, and he does. Peterson has to yield. Emery gets through. Turn eight, nice and clean. Still smoke coming off the rear wheel there. Someone's had a lock-up. As we see down in the inside, Andrew Jones makes the move also on Peterson. And he took advantage because Peterson had to lift to he let did. Emery through. Absolutely. So he had a run and he took full advantage just behind is Aaron Russell in that go-karts go-car. He's taken over from his big brother Drew, one car team this year for them. And look at Heimgartner just starting to chip away and close on up at the end of this second lap in this opening race of the season. Paul Umbrell coming into rhythm. Of course, he's driving with Jamie Winkup for Red Bull Racing Australia, but they were very keen to get him in a car this year. pedersen has gone to the lane, but they want Paul Umbrell to be absolutely sharp come September and to do the seven rounds of the Dunlop series. That's exactly why he's here. It's nice if you win some trophies along the way, Ooh, but it's about yeah. getting the rhythm and the focus. Yeah, it is. And, you know, we have Paul, and Paul did a great job last year, no question for, for Red Bull Racing, but, um, you know, they, they want to repeat those performances and make the most of it. So, you know, uh, he's in there doing it, and we know how much he loves driving these cars and does a great job out. Paul Morris here closing in a little bit on the back. Of the Eagleston Motorsport Commodore, Chris Pither, just ahead, Peterson in the lane. Maybe there was a little bit more damage, or they worried about that tyre uh, rubbing through. So they've pulled him in, and will they send him back out? I assume they will. This is Chris Pither in the Ice Break Coffee Commodore, position five at the moment, back with this team again. Car run by Brad Jones Racing, engineered again by Paul Forby, the former Marcus Ambrose Championship winning engineer from a few years ago. Oh, I think he's actually the, and the oh, current oh, Super oh, Tourer oh. champion winning yes, engineer, I, I think. And, I think and, that's, and that's who, more appropriate, actually. Who was his driver, Greg? Oh, listen, that's not important. <laughs> but nevertheless, he's hanging on here from Dumbrell. This is the Casey Stoner car from last year that was... Uh, Unbelievable, yeah. yeah. Took to a victory. Uh, he, was, he, he was, was moving. moving. Walsh he moved. is in trouble. And even, I saw the, the front wheels roll. And even if it was deemed that he stopped before the lights went out, he was outside the box. I think he was. I think there's going to be trouble there for Ash Walsh. I thought I saw him move just that little bit. He got away very well. Here we go, replay. 
of the start. He was clean into turn one and two. Be interesting to see what happens here, if anything's going to be done to Ash Walsh. As we see, oh, Waters just comes up with a, a new record, 22.7. 1 minute 22.7 in his chase of Ash Walsh. Just hearing Murph from race control, no penalty for Ash Walsh. They must have deemed that he stopped behind the line before, just in that blink of an eye before the red light went out. Well, that is very low. There's Heimgartner runs wide. He had a bit of an oversteer going in to turn five. And he just kept it together. I think it's really slippery offline there. And that's cost him some time. Taz Douglas in the very clean looking FG, the silver FG Falcon. Not one sticker on it other than the. There's Ooh, a bit of a replay. Play here. This is Michael Hector, Ooh. Gold Western Oil Ford, who is part of the three car Matt Stone Racing outfit. And Looks very lucky to get away with that. And here's a, he got away. a slow mo. Look at the ripples going through the front splitter. There, Ash Walsh's car through turn one, two. Great shots there. It's a fantastic uh, slow mo of the cars and how much load, how much pressure they apply. Oh, leaving a bit of rubber behind, too, as he exits. There's lots of action still to come on the other side of the break. This is race one of the Dunlop series. Chris Pith is a guy who's been around, former V8 Ute Series champion. In fact, his sixth place qualifying for Here this race is Here the go. best of his career, but it's not going to help him now because Dumbrell arrows it down the inside. Just Doesn't use a little bit of him. road. Pith comes back at him and doubles. Doubles back up the inside. Paul just using that little bit extra road there and having to turn the car too sharp, slow on the gas. And Chris made the most of that opportunity to get back up the inside. Oh, oh, and a long up Morris. from Morris. Right front was burning. Was a bit of an opportunity, he thought, there to catch back up and uh, put himself in a position to look at Paul, but uh, locked the front just a little bit. Amazing to see, Greg. Walsh and Waters, class of the field. They're yep. the only guys in the 22s. They are clearly three quarters of a second a lap faster than the rest of them in this early stage of the race. Haven't quite got to halfway, but Dumbrell does look like he's got the pace on Pitha, but it's just a case of getting it done right. He was in before at the hairpin, but has to do it all over again. This is the car that won Bathurst in 2010 with Craig Lowndes and Mark Scaife. This team in the off-season has recruited well. They've expanded to three cars, but John Russell from Triple Eight is their race engineer, along with Dan Crone on the race weekend. So their umbilical cord to Triple Eight. Triple Eight obviously not running in this series anymore, but it's very, very strong. Oh, it doesn't get much better than that. And for these guys, well, not so much Paul, but uh, certainly for Ann Peterson, he has another dive at the same spot again. Will he pull it up this time? And a little bit of a slide, but he's managed to get to the apex. Take two. Take two. Learn from that one, and he's managed to make it real clean past, past Chris Pither, who really just couldn't do anything about that. Paul got a great run through turn eight, got the car where he wanted, under brakes, and this time round managed to get it turned, and he burned straight off turn nine. So we'll see if Morris now has the ability to put the pressure on or now if Chris can settle into a rhythm behind Paul Dumbrell now that that move has taken place. This is the fight for position number three. Taz Douglas has got it at the moment. This is the ex-Shane Van Gisbergen SP Tools car from a couple of years ago. Remember that all the cars in the Dunlop series are the cars that formerly raced in the V8 Supercars Championship, which now runs with the new generation machines. So a lot of these cars, though, are still not old. They're only maybe a year or two old. They're still very fast. And still making plenty of speed. 122.49, fastest lap of this race for Cam Waters. And you can see on the graphic there just how much time Dumbrell has been able to take from these guys. But he's right on the back now. He's got to do something about them. Yeah, pressure is now fully on as he looks down the inside, went pretty late on Heimgartner. Heimgartner's going to turn in, but he has to give him room. Great move by the very experienced Paul Dumbrell. He's grabbed it down the inside, managed to pull it up and get the, get the Commodore turned. Didn't look like he was going to get away with it there, but uh, Heimgartner did very well, gave that little bit of room he needed to, and uh, they've got through there cleanly. This guy did everything right last year, Ash Walsh, but it all just saw him come up short right at the end of the season. But 
He's got to be looking really strong this year. He won here in the opening race last season. Runner-up in the championship. Got his first enduro drive with Dick Johnson's team. He's in the same car, the same team, the same engineering organisation. So he starts this year with all of the bases covered and he leads the way at the moment. Yeah, as you said, Noons Ashwell was with DJR last year for injuries. He's signed with them again. He's going to be racing with Scott Pye. Scotty, you yourself have had a great day today in Ashwell. He's sitting very nicely there at the moment. Yeah, exactly. Obviously, I'm watching pretty closely. You know, if he can do as good a job as he's doing out there in my car, I'm going to be pretty happy come Bathurst. And, of course, Andre Heimgartner was also recently announced as your junior driver for the Dick Johnson Racing Team. He's doing nicely as well. Yeah, exactly. He's sitting there pretty comfortably in P5 at the moment. And... Uh, I mean, it's great for a young guy as well, you know, like myself and Chaz and, and even Scotty. We had, uh, you know, we got looked after pretty well from our respective teams and, and it's done well for us. So, you know, it's great for Andre as well to be involved in, in Dick Johnson Racing and, uh, you know, hopefully we can keep doing well and he gets his shot one day as well. Thanks, Scotty. Enjoy the rest of the race. Thanks, guys. Scott Pye was in this series, Rihanna, a couple of years ago with Triple Eight in the Monster Commodore and he finished runner-up there. In his return year. See some damage there, sorry, Noons. On, look yeah, at Walsh's car. Up. So I'd say that's probably turn, turn one. one. Yep. That'll be a tyre bundle from yep. down at the centre chicane, which is where he's on his way at the moment. Scuff that left front. It's our right. It's, it's a reasonable left. amount of damage here. It's pulled, it looks like it's pulled the the bottom tray there away from the rest of the front split. And look, there's been a change further back. We've missed that. Paul Dumbrell has managed to get past Taz Douglas. And now Heimgarten is lining up for a run to the chicane as well. He's going to be a little bit too far back this time, but Dumbrell's found the opportunity and managed to find himself now in third position. But he's 14 seconds behind yep. the leader, Ash Walsh, who in turn has one and a half to Cam Waters. So from what we've seen in the last lap, Walsh's pace hasn't really dropped away. A bit of traffic here for Dumbrell to deal with. Here we go. His Dan favourite spot of the day so far. The old turn nine trick. Great run through eight again and just position, positioned his car down the inside. Nothing much Taz can do about, do about that. The, the uh, Triple Eight built Commodore looks very, very good under brakes, albeit he is being held up now. And this is Dan Day, young South Australian, one of the five Dunlop Series debutants who would be advised to stay where he is, let him go yeah. down the inside. He's <laughs> done it very nicely. Well done, young guy on debut, just 19 years of age in that ex Walkinshaw Commodore. And let's these guys go on with it. Now, watching the timing screens, Berth, Paul Morris needs to be careful. He's triggered the sensor at uh, turn one, or turn two, I should say. Three uh, times. Three times. One more pit lane penalty. Heimgartner looking pretty racy again. He's managed to tag on the back of Douglas. We'll see if he learned anything from watching Paul Dumbrell do the move a bit earlier. Yellow flags out at turn one. Not quite sure at this stage what we've got down there, but Oh, ah, Jim Policina's in the, been fence. in the fence. That's the ex-Tony Delberto Ford that he Look grabbed in the off-season. It's not going to move. Right front's busted. Yep, there's a lot of gravel on the road. Yep, would expect the safety car for that one because he can't get it moved. And that's not the way he wanted his first weekend with that car to finish up. Look at Heimgartner. He is really on a charge right now. Taz either maybe used a little bit of the, the rear tyres on his Falcon, potentially, but uh, it is on. Safety car's called, Greg. It will come out onto the circuit and it will give Paul Dumbrell a free ride to these guys. In fact, he's already got the free ride. Yeah, the safety car's out. They've backed off and it puts PD on the back of Cam Waters. So the pressure is going to be on the young Mildura driver to see if he can handle the pressure from one of the stalwarts of the sport. After the break, we're going all the way to the chequered flag on the streets of Adelaide. Safety car is coming off this lap. We're going to see six laps, hopefully, under green. But everyone's lined up. Who's looked after their tyres the best? There he goes now. It'll be Walsh who leads the pack. And he's waiting, Murph, for that acceleration zone introduced to V8 supercars last year with the 60-60 format. It's now on the front straight. He's in the zone. He's on oh, the throttle. People There's have gone. Drama There's drama behind. behind. There's so many guys who are not used to the system, and they completely mucked that up. They made a real meal of that. Race control will be giving out penalties tonight when this race is done because Look not enough overlaps. guys, yep. not enough guys knew what was going on there. That wasn't very good. 
They were on the gas from the apex, whereas Ash Walsh was waiting into that AZ zone, and I actually made the mistake as well, mate. So it wasn't just some of the guys down the back there forgot all about the acceleration zone being used on the front straight. And yet we were lucky to actually we got away with not uh, anyone in the fence because of that. And now everyone's trying to get hustling again. Their tyres have dropped temperature, they've dropped pressure for this final sprint to the line. Five laps to go on the streets of Adelaide. Walsh has done it well. Yeah, he's clearing away. He's got a little bit of pace on this first restart. You can see Ant Pedersen there in the background getting out of the way. Douglas Taz with some Douglas, damage. Yeah, yep. Right rear bumper's flapping. Oh, around the outside. Oh, Pedersen's Pedersen. in the wrong spot. He's trying to do the right thing, but he's actually doing the wrong thing by trying to do the right thing, if that yeah, makes sense. Yeah, very much in the wrong spot there for uh, to let the field through. As they... Hearing through Murph from Race Control that this is a, going to be a Pedersen wide. This will be a time certain finish, Greg. Morris so up the inside. There's not as much time left as, as we hoped. We otherwise would have liked to have seen, but that is how it is. Walsh, Waters, Dumbrow, one, two, three. They'll all start jumping the chicane if they've got hops left up that won't give them a post race penalty. Now Heimgartner, he'll clear. His fellow Kiwi. Who needs to get out of the wall. Morris just ducked out in time there as Peterson's trying to get out of the way as best he can. Waters has caught up a little bit. Dumbrell's caught up a little bit. The three of them will be... There's, oh. there's some action around turn six in the background. But turn nine this time round, there could be some... Breaking manoeuvres, here they go. No, Dumbrell's too far back. And I think Waters is too far back too. He's going to close right up and oh. put his nose in on Walsh. <laughs> he shows him the nose. But I think Walsh has got this one under control. He's driven a very, very good race. He's had a little bit in the bank when he needed it, when Waters put pressure on. He's got a little bit of damage to the front of that car after touching the turn one tyre barrier. But he's going to bring it home, Murph. Final turn, first race of the season. He won this one last year to set up a championship challenge. He'll get it done on the streets of Adelaide. Ash Walsh has won the race. The infant's friend Ford is on the board for 2014 in the Dunlop Series. The young Ipswich base driver has done the job. Really nice job. Great start. Good, solid, positive drive. Cam Waters, really well done for FPR in his debut run in that NZ car. Taz Douglas was a factor. Lots of Kiwis in there too, but it's Ash Walsh who picks up the win in race one on the streets of Adelaide. Ash Walsh, what a ripper start to the year for you. Yeah, it's fantastic to get out there and get the, uh, the first race win for the year. Um, I really felt like we had a good car today and probably underutilised it a little bit in qualifying, so I was really happy to get a good start and then follow on and just control the speed of the race. Speaking of that start, was it clean? Yeah, I had a bit of a creak during the start. I obviously didn't have the handbrake on enough, but when the lights went out, I wasn't moving, so... Go and enjoy. Thanks.